A few lectures back, we said that the perfectly competitive equilibrium is the one with the highest total social welfare, defined as the sum of consumer and producer surplus. What does this mean for social welfare monopoly? Just like taxes in competitive markets, monopolies lead to inefficiencies and deadweight loss that reduce total social welfare. Let's start with a market that's in competitive equilibrium. Here we have a supply curve and a demand curve intersecting to give an equilibrium price of P1 and an equilibrium quantity of Q1. The consumer surplus is this triangle, and the producer surplus is this triangle. Now think about what a monopolist would do in this market. He would set a higher price. Perhaps he set the price up here at P2, where consumers are only willing to purchase Q2 units. At this new price, consumer surplus is smaller, as you can see here. But producer surplus has grown. The area that is now producer surplus is greater than this area, which was the producer surplus with perfect competition. And clearly, total surplus has gone down. We've lost this triangle that used to be part of the surplus. This is the deadweight loss of monopoly. This deadweight loss exists because there are units on which the monopolist could make money and the consumers would value, but which don't get sold. Why not? Because to sell them, the monopolist would have to lower the price for all units and poison his previous sales. Making those trades would lower the amount that the monopolist could make on everyone else. The welfare loss for monopoly arises because monopolists have to charge one price to everyone. At some point, a monopolist won't lower his price even if it means making a positive profit on the next sale because he would lose money on all his existing sales. But what if monopolies didn't have to just charge one price? What if they could price discriminate, charging different prices to different consumers? Let's start with an extreme case. Imagine a monopoly firm could perfectly price discriminate. It could charge a different price to every single customer. What would the firm do? It would charge each consumer a price exactly equal to that consumer's willingness to pay. This is clearly profit maximizing. If the firm charged any less to a given consumer, it would be getting less money from that consumer. And if it charged any more, the consumer wouldn't buy at all. Here are the same demand and supply curves from earlier. In this case, the first consumer values the good at P3, so the monopolist charges are exactly that amount. The next consumer values the good a bit less, so the monopolist charges her a bit less, and so on. When would the monopolist stop selling? When the consumer's willingness to pay is equal to the marginal cost right here with the demand and supply curves cross. At this point, the monopolist could sell another unit, but marginal revenue would be less than marginal cost and he'd lose money on that unit. Notice that when firms can price discriminate, there is no deadweight loss. Every possible trade that both parties want to make gets made since the firm can adjust its price for each consumer based on her willingness to pay. As a result, Social welfare is maximized under perfect price discrimination. Since it's a consumer-specific price, there's no poisoning effect on previous sales. When the monopolist lowers the price for one consumer, he need not lower the price for earlier consumers willing to pay more. So the monopolist will keep selling to every consumer until the price is equal to the marginal cost, just like in the competitive equilibrium. That is, a perfectly price discriminating monopolist will sell the same quantity as that of the competitive equilibrium. What about welfare? Well, consumer surplus is now zero. Each consumer is being charged a price exactly equal to her willingness to pay. The producer is getting all the surplus from each sale, totaling this entire area here. And you can see that the producer surplus area for the price discriminating monopolist is the exact same area we had for the sum of consumer and producer surplus in the competitive market. With perfect price discrimination, there's no deadweight loss. Social welfare is maximized, even if it all goes to the producer. Though this price discrimination maximizes social welfare, something about consumers not getting a penny of that surplus may not seem fair. Often, we'll likely care about the distribution of this surplus between consumers and producers. We'll come back to this when we discuss issues of equity or fairness later in the course. Finally, you might be a bit skeptical of a firm's ability to perfectly price discriminate. How could it possibly know the exact willingness to pay for every single consumer? Well, usually it can't. But firms can do things that approximate this 
by using certain signals from consumers that hint at their willingness to pay. We'll look at some real-world examples of this in the application video.